Hi, and welcome back. Envelope generators are powerful tools, and they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Knowing what features to look for and how to use them will open up your patches. Today, we'll look at the power of CV control over envelopes, mix and invert envelopes to create unique modulation, use envelopes as unique LFOs, and explore envelopes generating gates and triggers. A few weeks ago, I made a beginner-friendly introduction to envelopes. You can watch that video here in case you missed it. This video is more about patch ideas. If you'd like to support my work or you want to get access to PDF sheets with hundreds of patch ideas I used in my videos, have a look at my Patreon. You can also support my channel through affiliate links in the video description. But now, let's dive right in. Envelopes are designed to modulate other parameters, but a lot of dynamics can be achieved when you modulate the envelopes as well. When you are new to modular, this could be easily overlooked, but control voltage inputs are always valuable. The more elements you have in your modular that can be modulated, the more fun you can have exploring patches. It's worth it to look for CV inputs on envelopes as well. In most cases, you will see CV inputs for different stages of the envelope. For example, this one has a CV input for the attack and decay stage of the envelope. Being able to modulate your envelopes opens up a world of possibilities. Here you see a basic synth voice with a sequencer, triggering an attack decay envelope, modulating both the filter and VCA. In this setup, a sine wave LFO is sent to an attenuator and then on to modulate the decay stage of the envelope. As is very often the case in modular patches, the attenuator is key. You don't want the decay stage of the envelope to be modulated from its minimum to maximum value. You just want it to drift subtly around the settings that fit the speed and sound of your patch. Let's open the attenuator and add some decay modulation. Subtle effects are often the best. Accentuate this or of course easily overdo it. You can use envelopes to modulate all sorts of things. Here is the same basic voice with a steady envelope modulating the filter and VCA. A second attack decay envelope is triggered by the clock and modulating the wave shape of the oscillator. This time that envelope is modulated with an LFO. This creates notes with a steady length but subtle tonal variations. Again, it's all about finding the right balance for the sound. Here's the exact same patch with a slower and randomized sequence, and slower envelope settings. A second LFO is added, this time modulating the attack parameter of the first envelope. Because the two modulation LFOs are not synced, the modulation will create lovely shifts in the sound. In upcoming patches, I will no longer show the attenuators in the graphics, just to avoid things getting cluttered. They're also not always necessary. Some envelopes, like this one, have attenuators built in. Sometimes, like with LFO modulation from this joystick, you can adjust the strength of the modulation at the source. But remember, you always have to dial in the right amount of modulation for everything one way or another. Here's the basic setup with a slightly more complex expansion. A second attack decay envelope is triggered by the clock. This envelope is opening a VCA, allowing an audio rate signal from a second oscillator to modulate the frequency of the main oscillator. 
the envelope's decay is modulated again with an LFO. Of course, you can modulate envelope stages with anything you like, for example, a joystick. Here, the X and Y output of the joystick are modulating the attack and decay, giving easy control over both. Another great way to modulate an envelope is with a sequencer, especially if you like more percussive or rhythmical sounds. Here is a basic steady voice. This time the envelope is triggered with a sequencer, but the CV output of that sequencer is modulating the envelope decay. A second sequencer is triggering another envelope, modulating the wave shape. This sequencer only triggers the envelope on certain steps, creating nice patterns. The CV output of that envelope is modulating the decay as well. The second sequencer is synced to the first to create looping patterns. Finding CV modulation for all stages of a full ADSR envelope is less common, but this module from Erica Sins does have exactly that, so I can show some examples for that as well. Here's the basic voice, controlled with a keyboard. The gate output is used on a full ADSR envelope, modulating the filter and VCA. The mod wheel output of the keyboard is used to control the sustained part of the envelope, allowing for dynamic playing. Here's the same idea, but this time the mod wheel is used to modulate both the attack and decay times of the envelope. This gives you easy control over the shape of the notes. You can experiment with different modulation and modulation destinations. Here's the bass voice, but this time a simple attack hold decay envelope is used to open the filter and VCA. This envelope controls the shape and volume of a note. A copy of the gate output from the keyboard is gating a full ADSR, and that envelope is modulating the wave shape of a wavetable oscillator. The mod wheel output is used to modulate the sustain and attack parameter of the ADSR. This envelope controls the tonal modulation within a note, allowing lots of variations. CV modulation is also great when looping envelopes, but I'll come back to that later. A lot of envelopes have a set number of stages and ways to control them, but you can always push envelopes a bit further with some basic utilities. For starters, you can patch two envelopes to something like a mixer, crossfader or summing VCA and combine them to create new envelope shapes. Here you see an envelope shape with a fast attack and slower decay. If you mix that signal with an envelope with a very slow attack and some decay, 
the result is the sum of those envelopes. This creates a new unique shape. Using subtle different attack, decay and input level settings, you can create interesting shape variations. Let's try that with some delay. Of course, you can mix different kinds of envelopes together. Here is a quick attack decay envelope mixed with a slow full ADSR. The mixed result has a spiky plug and then another rise, decay, sustain and release stage. Here you see that idea in a patch. A voice is controlled with a keyboard, gating two envelopes at the same time. Those envelopes are mixed and the result is modulating the filter and VCA. To add juice to this patch, a copy of only the ADSR envelope is used to modulate the wavetable oscillator. Because most envelope generators only create positive voltages, inverting them is another trick that opens up possibilities. As a reminder, here you see a fairly regular ADSR envelope shape. Before and after the signal is generated, the output voltage is zero. And the envelope itself consists of positive voltages. If you invert this envelope, you get this signal. Again, before and after the envelope is generated, the output is zero volt. But now the envelope generates negative voltages. You can use this negative voltage in your patches. For example, to close a filter with the envelope, or to slow down an LFO when you press a key. Sometimes you can find inverted outputs on an envelope generator. Sometimes you don't need it because you might have an attenuverter on the module you want to modulate. For example, these filters have attenuverters here. Otherwise, an external attenuverter is a useful tool to have, not just for envelopes. Of course, you can combine both tricks and, for example, mix this positive attack decay envelope with this inverted ADSR. This creates a shape that briefly spikes, then drops down, holds a negative voltage and glides back up to zero volt when you release the key. A unique aspect of envelopes is that they can create momentary signals. But a lot of envelopes can loop as well, and that makes them even more powerful modulation sources. You can find this function often on attack decay envelopes. When you switch these into loop mode, they re-trigger themselves every time the decay stage is finished, and thus create an LFO-like signal. Here's an example of an attack decay envelope and how that signal looks when looped. The first thing that sets an envelope apart from most regular LFOs is that you still have full control over the shape. So you can create signals with a shape in between the classic saw, triangle and ramp. As you can hear though, the behavior is different from your classic LFO. If you change the length of one of the stages, both the shape and frequency of the modulation change. All this adds unique aspects to using a looping attack decay envelope as a modulation source, especially when they have CV control. Here's a simple voice with sequencer, this time triggering an attack decay envelope, modulating the wave shape to create a clocked plucky sound. A second looping envelope is used to modulate the filter. 
an LFO is modulating the attack time of the looping envelope, creating variations in modulation speed and shape. Something to remember is that the output voltage range of a regular envelope is positive, meaning it changes the parameter you are modulating only in one direction. You need to mix the envelope with a negative offset voltage if you want classic bipolar LFO behavior. These two envelopes from Ergasins actually have a dedicated bipolar output, so you don't need to mix negative offset with other modules for this effect. A bipolar signal is especially nice for modulating sensitive parameters that are carefully set. For example, the pitch of an oscillator. Here's a simple voice, this time again with regular attack decay envelope modulating the filter. The modulated looping LFO is detuning the frequency of the oscillator. Because the bipolar output is used, it's easy to dial in subtle drifting around the set frequency. You generally don't find looping switches on ADSR envelopes. If you watched my previous video, you already know why. Most attack decay envelopes always finish their attack and decay stage even when they just received a short trigger. So when the module triggers itself, every time it finishes the decay stage, you get a looping shape. An ADSR envelope though needs a variable long gate input to generate a full envelope. This more complex shape can just re-trigger itself without knowing what kind of gate is feeding it. Within a modular, there are some interesting options though. For example, if you have something like a gate generating clock divider, or square wave LFO. Here you see a slow bipolar square wave LFO as example. You can use a signal like this to gate an ADSR and create a looping signal. This module, however, has a nice trick and is able to generate a gate input with adjustable length for itself. This means you can create a long full ADSR when you send the module just a trigger, but it also means it can easily create looping full ADSR shapes all by itself. You can even modulate the gate length to create interesting shifting looping envelopes. Quite some envelopes can generate triggers or gates beside the envelope signal. That's a very powerful feature to look for and it comes in many variations. Gates or triggers generated by envelopes are most often related to specific points or stages in the envelope. This envelope generator for example has an EOC output, which stands for end of cycle. But for these kinds of outputs, always make sure to check the manual to see how a manufacturer implemented a specific function. Some modules generate a short trigger at the end of a stage, for example the end of attack or end of decay stage as you see here. Some modules generate a high gate during a stage, for example during the decay stage. Some generate a high voltage when the envelope is not active and so on. There are a lot of subtle variations. This module, as you can see by the little light here, generates a trigger each time the envelope finished both attack and decay stage. At the same time, when I stop looping the envelope, the end of cycle output generates a continuous high gate when no envelope is generated. The gate turns off during the envelope. Signals like this open up interesting tricks. For example, the trigger of a looping attack decay envelope can trigger a second not looping attack decay envelope with faster time settings. 
This is effectively a trigger delay, which can be used for percussive things as well, but you can also use both signals to modulate different parameters and create interesting rhythmic movement. Or, of course, mix them together, as you saw in a chapter earlier, to create unique shapes. Here, the left envelope is looping and modulating the filter, and the right one is triggered by the left and modulating the wave shape. Depending on how your envelopes work exactly, you could use a trigger output of one envelope to trigger another envelope that generates a trigger. Use that to trigger the first again, which will re-trigger the second again, and so on. This creates a unique looping signal. Envelopes that generate a gate when not creating a signal, like the ones I'm using, can even gate a full ADSR. Of course, you can take this trick as far as you like and stack effects. Here, a voice with a high and low pass filter in chain is used. A keyboard is gating an attack hold decay envelope, modulating the low pass filter. A copy of the gate is used to trigger an attack decay envelope, modulating the wave shape. The end of cycle gate output is used to gate a delayed ADSR, modulating the low pass filter as well. And finally, a copy of that gate is used on a regular ADSR, modulating the high pass filter. There's a lot of drive in dispatch, creating lovely rhythmic movement when playing the voice. When it comes to modular, there's always more to say. But I hope these videos give you a solid starting point when it comes to envelopes. If you want to learn more, have a look here. And as always, smash that like, subscribe and bell button if you want to see more modular content from me. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.